Support the growth of your favorite digital show with just a text. Support Larry Reed Live by texting GIVE to 404-800-4530. Text G-I-V-E to 404-800-4530 today. All right, let everybody know, all of your friends know that Larry Reed Live is on. What is it? <clears throat> I don't know. I may have missed all of that up when I'm messing with it. I don't know. But anyway, let all of your followers know that we are on. Hello to those of you that are watching us live right now on Facebook and also on Paradigm Scope. Kendall, you cannot be doing that. But you can't keep doing it like that. Because I'm trying to talk. You're messing stuff up and messing with my nerves. And um, if you watch me right now on YouTube, I am not live. It just seems like I'm live. I'm premiering. But next month, I will be able to go live on YouTube all over a darn again. The devil thought it had me, but I got away. <laughs> so I'll be coming back on YouTube live. Right now, I'm premiering. And I'm in the chat with you live right now. Okay, can you quit? Just let it go. It's fine. It's all right. Okay, this is what we're going to talk about tonight. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to recap the Super Durham Bowl. And then after that, we're going to talk about some other little things that's on my heart, on my mind that I've been seeing online. I'm going to talk about this Charles Jenkins. There was a letter that was put out yesterday. I don't know if y'all know who Pastor Charles Jenkins is. But if you remember a long time ago, this picture got released of this man naked and he was a preacher and his Ping was in the shape of a C. That was eye opener for me. And because of that, I don't care how many times I see him doing. I should have got a video of that and put it in here. Of him doing that, like flip the clap. It's flipped it. I don't know why he. He's a little strange, man. He's a strange man. He look like he might be nice, but he just seemed to be a little strange. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, he uh, I'm going to talk about that at the end of the show. But before I get to that, I got something to say to the victor. Because I heard what y'all said about me over there at y'all church on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm, yep, yeah, I got eyes up in there. And I'm going to say something to that elder Mia who said it. I'm going to say that at the end of the show. But I'm going to walk slowly to that point in the show. Talk about some stuff going on with Real Housewives of Atlanta. What happened at the Super Bowl. Also the Gospel Bowl. And some other stuff in between there. The Christoph St. John that done killed herself once again. Somebody has taken their own life. So we're going to have a conversation about that. I'm going to open up the lines. Let me go ahead and give you the number right now. Let me go ahead and give you the number right now. The number is 646-787-8174. So go ahead and save it. If you want to, you can go ahead and call in and get in line because they're only going to take like 10 or 15 of you guys, but you cannot miss any part of the show. And you can talk about any part of the show. Okay, so go ahead and log it in there. 
Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm not live, so don't call that line. You ain't gonna be able to get through. But I am in the chat. You can ask me questions. I'll be right there talking and speaking with you. And thanks to all of you that support Larry Live. How you do that? By supporting the network that supports Larry Live. The MBN Network. You go to the MBN Network, there's two N's, dot org, and you click donate, and you're able to support what we are doing here. Or you can text the word GIVE to the phone number 404-800-4530. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start first with this here. Oh, I need for y'all to share, 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 because there's something going on with my um notifications with the Facebookings, and there's something that is going, what is wrong? And there's something that is going, you already done started now. Stop, Nancy. Just stop. You can't be doing all that over there. I'm going to try to do this. Just don't do that. Just don't do that. Hang up the phone. I'm through talking. Goodbye. All right. Just, just, shh, shh. Okay. There's something going on with my Facebook and my notifications and my YouTube and Paradigm Scope. So I need for you guys to share so people can know that we are on. I did text about 1,500 of you right when I came on to let you know that I was coming on live. That's the best I can do, you guys. Because Facebook now, Mark Zuckerberg is all the time messing with the stuff, the algorithms, and messing them over there on Instagram and IG and everything. I can't do nothing about it. I can't do nothing about it. Not right now. I get a little bit piece more money and more connections. Then I can do something about it right now. <coughs> I'm at his, um, at, at, you know, it's what it, what it is. All right, Super Bowl. Man, I'm in Atlanta. So in Atlanta, for like the past week, the whole downtown has been drenched in Super Bowl stuff. The buildings got lights going on them. The same thing what they're doing for the Olympics, but I won't live in here for the Olympics. I didn't come here until 2015, August 2015. I'm not an AT alien, you know, uh, originally. I am now, of course, because I've been here a certain amount of years, but I'm really from North Carolina. So the entire city has been drenched in the whole Super Bowl paraphernalia. It's every darn where. Everywhere you go, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Darn Bowl. Now, I'm going to tell you what's exciting about this. First of all, to be in a city that can host something of this nature, there are about 7 million people here. There's all kinds of stuff going on here all the darn time. Every artist you can think of is always here doing, singing, dancing, stripping, you know. There's some of everything always here. It, 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 every night to the week, there's always something going on in Atlanta. In fact, if you are watching me, wherever you're watching me, from, watching me from, you should make Atlanta one of your vacation spots. Go ahead and come on down here. There's plenty of stuff to see. You got the whole Martin Luther King, his whole story, and all the part that happened here in Atlanta. And you can just drive almost like an hour away and get to Selma. How far is Selma? About two hours to sell me that hole and walk the bridge and everything. Just get you a whole black history experience. You know, the whole lot of people here for the Super Bowl, that's what they did. They went to the Martin Luther King Museum. They went to Ebenezer Baptist. They, they went to all the different places because you got that. Then you got the Six Flags. Then you can go all the Usher them house, Tyler Perry them house, go into all the neighborhoods, see all the Weird Housewives of Atlanta, all the Mary the Medicine. You got all this kind of stuff you can come, come here and see. And then if you go to the mall, at any given time you go to the mall, you'll see a, a famous person. Okay, they said I'm rambling, but 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 let me let, let me let me tell y'all something. They folk that watch the show to get they happy off of me talking. I'm just I just get here to sit here and be my regular person and make somebody just happy. They laugh and they learn. So don't be always trying to keep me on every subject because some folk want to see me go off subject. Now let me let me be let me be. All right. <clears throat> anyway, you said a stri stripper bowl is this coming week? Oh, okay. well I knew that. That's why I said stripper. You know, I was going to put everybody in there. At what what room? Gold. At the gold room, man. That's, I can throw a rock and hit a titty. That's right there. Lord have mercy. I didn't know they were stripping at the gold room. Good Google the moon. All right. Anyway, so the L.A. Raiders, I mean the, mm, the L.A. The, the LA, L.A. Rams and the New England Patriots. Now, a whole lot of people upset because the Patriots are back in the Super Bowl again. This is what I say. 
if you go, if you're good at what you do, you're just good at what you do. You bend that uh, eleven times, you know, one six times. You, you ain't got enough fingers for the rings. I think it's great. I think it's dandy. I don't have no problem with it. Win over and over and over. I'm not really that invested in nobody's team except Team Reed. You know, so I like to see people win. So I'm really happy for the Patriots win. And I got a text from Brian Kahn. Some of you may not know what it is. Some of you do. Prophet Brian Kahn, like two weeks ago, he said they're going to get it and they're going to win it again. So make sure you get on your show and say it. Say it. I said to him, I can't remember what I said to him. Or maybe I thought it. Nigga, you don't tell me what to do on my show. But I was going to mention it in a darn way. Because I want everybody to know, no matter who you are, secular or from the sacred side, I just ain't going to talk about when you get it wrong. I'm going to talk about when you get it right. Not just when you're doing bad, but also when you're doing good. Whatever's in publications, I'm going to talk about it. So don't y'all be out there trying to tell people, don't watch this, this gossip show and negativity. Lies. Sometimes it's negative because you negative. Sometimes it's gossip because it's what it is. And what? But anyway, so they got all these rings and um, a lot of folk are upset because they do not want the Patriots win only because they have won so many times. I don't see anything wrong with this. I am 100% happy that you guys have won. And I love the whole Super Bowl thing. The money that it brings, all the money of surrounding the Super Bowl is very interesting to me. What is it? What are you talking about? Oh my God, there's something that is in it. Click delete. Did you click delete? Okay, click delete again. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, now move it back over there. Go and put that that one up about the Super Bowl facts. I love this. This is so interesting to me. Y'all listen to how much money is surrounding this whole thing. This is very bring it over. All right, a 30-second spot reportedly cost between $5 million and $5.5 million. And it's because so many people are, really, are watching. <coughs> so that's $5, five million and $5.5 million for a 30-second spot. It's estimated that 103.4 million people watched the Super Bowl in the U.S. alone last year. It's estimated that 1.3 billion chicken wings and 3.6 million kilograms of guacamole nasty guacamole is so nasty to me it's, it's hilarious it don't taste like nothing but mush just in and, and it look it looked like what come, was in my daughter's diapers both of them at different times in their life when they were infants they always done this green mush poo i don't know what it was about and will be consumed the average price per seat is approximately seven thousand dollars that's crazy I didn't know that. Each player on the winning team will receive $118,000 and each losing team player will get $59,000. It will be broadcast internationally to 180 countries in about 25 different languages. So, you know what I would love to be able to do? I would love to be able to write a check to the NFL people and be like, run my commercial for Larry Live. on That, that's, that is a huge, huge spot. $5.5 million. Oh, did y'all see the Mercedes? They showcased a new Mercedes. Now they got a Class A. Now, I pulled it up online. I watched this long 15-minute um, thing of this female driving the car. A lot of people say the C-Class Mercedes is going to be replaced by the A-Class Mercedes. It very well could be. And they say the C and the A-Classes, unless it's a CLA class, is really for all the women. It's, and the young people, it's really not for men. But I did have a couple of C-Classes. I don't care what you say. And I did enjoy it. Actually, the last one I had was a, was a C300. I think the one before that was a CLA. But <clears throat> though I enjoy Mercedes. I love the way that they handle the road. They're very doable. If you want to trade your car, you're always going to get top dollar for it. I don't see nothing wrong with Mercedes. But they bought $5.5 million for a Mercedes. <clears throat> Ain't nothing. You know what? They, they run it more than once. So I'm going to say the $5.5 million every time they run it. There are a whole lot of money surrounding the Super Bowl. And I read, AJC, they estimated that millions upon millions of dollars Atlanta made for hosting this here. And I want, um, what is she, Keisha Bottoms? What's the middle name? Keisha Lance Bottoms. Okay, this this is what I um I I I, I um uh, black woman in the politics said here. Why she the mayor, the governor? I forget all them names that get me. It disappeared. Okay, let me read it to you. All right, <clears throat> it ain't bring it over. See if it can come over like that. Bring it over like that, like just like it is, and see if if it show up. 
Nope, it don't even show up. All right, I'm gonna tell you what she said. Hold on for a minute. Ah, oh, Lord, I mess. I don't know why this thing ain't show up. But I'm gonna tell you what she said. She said, "Thank you, Atlanta, from our employees to our volunteers and residents. I am so very proud of all of us. We have once again shown the world that we are a wonderfully diverse city, full of people, of great people, and a trash. Yeah, mayor, right? <clears throat> um, I don't know what the governor is. The other black woman that lost to the white man, right? They have a big face, black, black woman, big cheek. Yeah, she had a little curly hair, but she, Abrams, but she ain't winning that thing. You know, that, that, what's his name? Camp? Camp? He took it from her. Full of great people and attractions up next to Final Four. Oh, I didn't know. The, so the Final Four going to be here. Okay, that's college basketball. That's next. No, this two, yeah, in 2020. That's great. I hope to do the Olympics here one more time. I would like to be here for that experience. I would like to. They said that changed Atlanta forever. And I heard that since the Olympics up to now that there have been 3 million people. The population of the city increased by 3 million people, 4 million people since then. I would like to see Atlanta host. Let me tell y'all something about Atlanta. And I, and I, I hate to talk up my city, but, but I don't really hate to. I'm just saying it. Atlanta, Atlanta is very diverse. I've lived in NC. I've lived in New York. It's very, very diverse. I've traveled to quite a few countries. And from my experience, there aren't too many cities on the East Coast as diverse as Atlanta. And it is a wonderful place to live, a great place to come vacation. If you come vacation, make sure you stay about four days. Stay somewhere on the Martha so you ain't got to drive your car because too much traffic down here just like it is in L.A. So make sure you get where you can just take the Martha, get a hotel in the Martha and go in and out of town, go everywhere else you want to go. This was a great choice for the NFL to host white NFL to host uh, the Super Bowl here in the blackest city on the East Coast. Ain't it interesting? And then y'all can have the Maroon 5s to come and sing and everything. But let's talk about the music. The first musical thing that was real good at the Super Bowl was Chloe and Halle. Is it Haley or Halle? Chloe and Haley? Chloe and Haley. Now, I'm going to tell y'all who this is. That disappeared too? Okay, well, this, uh, let me just talk about it. Wait a minute. <sighs> Lord of mercy. I, I don't know what the problem is. Okay, I was trying to show y'all a picture of Chloe and Haley, but that, that ain't work. But Chloe and Haley is two little girls, two little girls, and they are actually signed to the label of Beyonce, and they son America the Beautiful. They both signed just like her. I mean, just like her. They sound like uh, when, when she sang Soprano, when she sang Alto, they both sound just like her. They did really, really well. It was very emotional. Then the next thing, let's see if this picture going to work. The next thing that I think was the most um, intriguing musically, when the music surrounded the Super Bowl, aside from all the concerts that was going on here in Atlanta, I mean, everybody was here doing a concert, was Gladys Knight, minus the pips. Lord, that picture done this and and peer too. See if the bit won't come over her. <clears throat> what's, the, what's the problem? What's going on? That shit go. She stayed. Good, cause let me talk about first. Let me say all the positive things about Gladys Knight. She sang her face off, and it was very soulful, very emotional. Number two, did not know Gladys Knight was not need. I did not know she was not need. She is not need. Number two, number three. This was not a good outfit for her to wear. It needed to cover up the not neediness and come middle way of her calf, and the shoe was absolutely wrong. It wasn't even zipped up in the back because it ain't even holding tight to her ankles, and she got thick legs, so they could have found a boot, boot that would actually go with the silhouette of her leg. Now, the outfit that she had on bedazzled at the top, if she could have got away with the outfit, although I didn't really think it was that great. But white, it was definitely the right color. This is all my opinion now. But then she had that piece of aluminum foil in her head that made her look like a bedazzled Kleenex box sitting on the back in the first lady's office. You know how the first lady office at the church house, they always bedazzle everything, the microphone, everything. That's why she looked like a bedazzled tissue box. And that was not right. Whoever put her in this and done all the accessorizing, the shoes was wrong, the aluminum foil in her hair was wrong. Y'all should not have did that to Gladys Knight minus the pips. It was not right. But she sang all she wanted to. And when she lifted her voice and key parts, lift, how she, how the song start? Um, uh, uh, oh, okay. oh, say can you see? That's what she done. Mm -hmm. And then the other part when she said, "And the rockets, red clear," and she let her voice fall like that. I was like, 
No gay proof through the night. I would play it, but I can't play it because they're like to block my mess on the YouTubes and messing my money. I can't do that. So I'm gonna put the link up on here after the show is done. I'm gonna put the link in there. You can click the link, go straight to her singing, straight to Chloe and Halley singing. That hallelujah and Chloe done really, really, really good. And then um Gladys Knights minus the pip, she did really, really good. She just ain't look right. Except for that, she just didn't do right, didn't do it right. Now let's talk about Maroon 5 because that was the halftime show. And if I be 100% um, honest, that's the time that I tune into the show. Now over there, it's all these white boys. And right there to the right <coughs> is uh, PJ Morton. That's Bishop Paul S. Morton's son. PJ Morton, that's who he is. So his dad is a bishop. He come up out of the church. He come out of us. In the middle is Adam Levine. I think Adam Levine can sing his face off. And PJ Morton is an exceptional talent. And and by them really pulling PJ Morton in there, a lot of Maroon 5's melodies and harmonies, there's a certain something that is in their music. And I would have to step out and say that it's probably because of the relationship between, that Adam Levine has with PJ Morton, which is, is marrying that soul in there i really like maroon five but let me be honest about the halftime show the halftime show sucked sucked it was horrible oh my god it was terrible i said what in the world i mean there, won't, there was there was no part of a lift now, there was one part when there was a lifting of laughter. I don't know who this woman is, but this woman that she, they handed her the mic and Adam Levine would turn to her and this woman went this. Ah! Ah! I said, what is that? I looked at my TV. I looked around. I said, what? I said, what was screaming like that in the middle of this here set? Ah! <laughs> See? So wait, you know, sometimes when that bug get around that ear, make that high pitch thing in your ear. I'm doing like this, there, fly a gnat, something done got in here. Ah! I mean, all off notes. Who's 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 this here? Who this woman? You know, who she is somebody in the comments. Let me know who that woman was. She was in the choir robe. Ah! Mike out your face. Hold it down there like that. What in the world? Ah! <laughs> oh my God. Oh my. Oh, we're so terrible. Kendall, will you leave me alone? Let me do the darn show. You can't think ahead out loud. Think ahead to yourself. You say that you can't. I'm trying to have a conversation. You keep taking me out of con. I got the only way to make this show good is that I don't feel like I'm on TV. And you keep talking, reminding me we shooting the show. Stop it! Oh God, I don't know what to wear. But yeah, whoever find out, somebody please find out for me who. Since we're talking about all the music of the Super Bowl, prior to the Super Bowl, it actually was the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. I don't know if y'all know that they were doing this, but they actually were doing the gospel. They had a gospel. Just hit blank shot to the up, uh, not there. Hit that and hit blank shot up there to the top. No. Here? Yeah, there. What's wrong with you? I'm trying to get it right. Continue. I'm not paying you. I'm not. Nope. You're not getting paid for this. I'm deducting. I pay you for all day to do everything. And this, dude, this is terrible. Do I done showed you what to do. do I am going to do the show, but will you click the show? You're a helper outer. You can't even do the helper outer part. I can't understand. What, what's this? Five dollars off. Anyway, uh, click that there. Bring them over. And they better not disappear during period. There they go. All right. So look, they had this. See right there, we done changed the top. This the gospel soup. See, I've been doing all this production work, and Ken, the only thing I do is click the button. I don't understand what the problem is. So anyway, uh, do you know who this is here? That's Israel Hutton. Israel Hutton um married Adrian from the real. 
They have been friends all a long time, even before he divorced his first wife. They used to go out on tours and stuff. Even before he divorced, divorced his first wife, they were already friends. So after he divorced his first wife, it, we blinked and we called for three times. <clears throat> and then she, he was married to her. God bless what they're doing right now. This is the new church. This is what they do now. Don't even, you know, this is just how it is. And I think this, I think, didn't Joel, you know, Joel Austin is a smart man because he separated himself from Israel Hutton first when he, then he, Israel Hutton did all this. Ain't that what happened? Or either he set himself down or something like that. Same thing with um, Baby Jakes. <clears throat> but he still go back and forth. With, um, Baby Jakes go there on Wednesdays. Anyway, and Ricky Smiley's. So Ricky Smiley's and Adrian Hutton, they they hosted the 20th annual. You know, I did not know, know this had been going on for 20 whole years. For 20 whole years, every Super Bowl, I thought this was something like starting last six, seven, maybe 10 years. I didn't know what 20 whole years. See, all of the folk that be out there on the field with the ball, a lot of them come up at the church. And so they created this choir. <clears throat> they sing on this program too. I recorded. I have it on my um thing. Y'all, it's probably on YouTube somewhere. And Hezekiah Walker song, I'll make it. And they sing the background. They pull one of the singers. He can sing really good. He led another song after that. And who? Yeah, work it out. You see, he sung work it out. Which you ain't, don't see men singing the, that song because that's a female lead song. You got to be a good good church mother to sing that. Then again, he could have been a church mother. We don't know. We never know these days. You know, they, they are all different kinds of all different kinds of. Um, anyway, let me go to the next topic before I get in trouble with that. Okay, so another uh, great part of the gospel Super Bowl was Kurt Franklin. Kurt with a T. Kurt Franklin. He. <clears throat> saying his new singer that I told y'all about last Monday show. Nobody's paying me to say this. I say this on my own. Nobody has bought any adver advertisement time. This is a good song. It's a great song. It sounds like something he would write. Like I said, some folks say all this stuff sounded like because he used the same Maddie Moss approach to making the verse of a song, something that the chorus was singing in unison typically. This is a great song. It's very positive. Make you feel real you know, positivity and all that kind of going on. This is actually what he had on right there. He actually dressed real nice for this part. Now, this is what's so interesting to me as it relates to Kurt Franklin. <clears throat> he is the... Now, we killed, killed Tony, who's now... We killed him so bad, he switched his name. So I do not want to be called Tony no more. I'm going to be B-Slay because y'all done told me down so bad. We killed Tony... And who's now be slayed because he be on the stage gyrating and all this kind of going on. But it's like um, we allow Kurt, Kurt with the T, we allow Kurt Franklin to um, just dingle his peen and gyro, gyrate his hips and, and shake his bread box and tight little pants. You know, we ain't got no problem with him doing that. And he do the same five moves to every song, you know, and we do it and we enjoy it. <clears throat> we we don't even care. It don't because we love Kurt. Kurt, Kurt. We absolutely love Kurt. You can get up there, shake, you see me, all you want to do, and do the same five moves and sing the songs. We don't even care because we love you so darn much. This is a great song. Go and order, download, stream, uh, get hold of Love Theory. It is a very positive song. Now, when you go there to get that song, you also you type in there. Read, and the world needs you. And it's a song about love, the same thing. I think those will be two nice streams and downloads for you on the night. Go on over there and get it. <clears throat> and learn Kurt dance moves. Don't matter what age you are. There ain't but five of them. Just learn them and use them at any party. Or you can even use it um, to as your dance in the spirit at church. Just learn it. It's the same five moves he do on every song. God bless Curtis. Franklin, we're so happy about your hit. Already added to about 40 stations. I don't know how in the world you be doing it. Already added to 40 stations and your song just came out. And now you in the way. You in the way. I'm trying to push my artists up the radio chart and you all in the way short self. In the darn way. All right, on to the next thing. <clears throat> I forgot to even mention about how when... um. That Travis Scott and Big Boy. I'm telling you, that, that just sucked. That really sucked. Okay, this is the other group that performed during the Super Bowl part for the gospel, and it was the Winans. Now, the guy on the end, Ronald Winans, he's dead and he's gone. To me, 
he was the only brother that could out sing Marvin Winans. Not all of them can sing, but we all got our favorites. But to me, Ronald was the only one who can out sing Marvin. <clears throat> now Marvin is bad, but Ronald had that, and and Marvin got it in his voice too. That's this something that is so sweet, so calming, so innocent, and so smooth and cool that was in Ronald's voice, and Marvin got it in his voice as well. But to me, Ronald was the um, the best singer out of this group. Why we we pit people against each other in groups, I don't know. It just is what it is. But they sang, and they sang with Tamia. Now, what Tamia from? Where's she from? <clears throat> well, Tamia, light-skinned girl, she was dressed really nice. At first glance, I thought it was Karen Clark Sheard, but it wasn't her, it was Tamia. She opened up her mouth. I know it was not Karen Clark Sheard. She sung okay. She was an okay church singer. She did all right. And the song didn't was Tomorrow. I didn't know. Let me tell you something I did not know. I did not know that Marvin and Carvin was twins, fraternal twins. You knew that? I didn't know that. I didn't know it. Carvin' daughter is on Greenleaf. I, I made her one of the sisters. I thought she would um, CC, Debbie, and all them sisters, but she ain't. Carvin is actually her, her, her pappy. You know the one, Debbie? It ain't not Debbie. De Deborah Winans on the um, Greenleaf. The one whose husband is, is a gay. And with the other lawyer gay, that's his daughter. I think that's Carvin right there, ain't it? Yep, it is. <clears throat> She looked just like him. I did not know Marvin and Carvin was twins. And there's a bunch of them whinings. I was counting them the other day. I got up to know about seven or eight numbers. I said, this is too many children. I don't know what um, Pop whinings and Mama whinings are doing. They weren't doing nothing but frucking. Praying and frucking. That's all. <laughs> Let me go ahead and pray. Let me go ahead and fruck. Let me go ahead and pray. Cook. They had to cook. All of them thick. Every last one of them whinings is thick. Ain't now... Now one of them skinny, except for, is it Angie? One of them a little skinny, where well, they used to be, probably ain't skinny no more. <clears throat> they like to eat. But they sung um, Tomorrow, and the second song they sung, Marvin led, loved it, it's time, it's time, time to make a change, we are the people, we can do it. Oh, it's time. You should go stream that too. I don't care how old it is. This song is going to be good uh, forever and a day forever. All right. <sighs> All right. I think I'm through with the Super Bowl stuff. Now it's time to go into some of the stuff that's happening in our culture. I'm going to talk about 21, uh, 21 Savage and Christoph St. John, Wendy Williams update, tell you what's going on with her show. I got to tell you something what's going on with the Real Housewives of Atlanta, particularly Kenya. And then we're going to get into Bow Wow. <coughs> and then we're going to close the show out talking about some stuff that's going on in the church once more and again. I'm going to tell you all about it, but after this, no, I'm going to tell you about all of that after this. Hit that thing for Jordan Dago. My father went to West Virginia to do a job. My mother liked the mountains and decided to stay. And that one decision changed the trajectory of my life. There was a prophet who didn't even know me at that time named Prophet Bernard Jordan, who was prophesying the 50 states. And he prophesied to West Virginia and said, Oh, West Virginia, hear ye the word of the Lord. Out of the mountains shall come a prophet unto the nations. Are you in need of direction for a decision you have to make? Maybe you're curious about the future. If that's you, the founders of Zoe Ministries and the Company of Prophets are offering you free prophecy. Call 888-831-0434. Don't wait. Call 888-831-0434. Do it today. All right, we are back. Take this moment right now and share with everybody that's on your social media occasions. Now, if you watching me on Periscope, I'm talking to you too because y'all real fun over there. You don't like to be sharing. And I look over there sometimes, look at y'all comments. I'll go back and watch and see who following us over there. On Facebook, share every last. I want 200 of you on Facebook to share the link right now. Go ahead on share it. <clears throat> I know y'all be shamed sometimes that y'all are watching me, especially those of you that are in the church. What is it? It ain't working. I didn't told you. It ain't working. That plug, you got the, that, that, that cord is towed up. It ain't no good. Well, let's plug it right there. No, you might not be able to do that. 
Okay. But anyway, <clears throat> so go ahead and share with everybody's on your social media cases. We're about to get started as soon as Nancy get up off this floor because I need some charge to my laptop. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm scared to plug it in there. Kendall, you just knocked the whole camera. Yes. Nigga, what's wrong with you? You can't be messing with the camera like that. Can y'all see me? What did you know the camera sitting right there? I didn't see the camera. How you ain't see the camera big as it is? It's almost taller than you is. Short sale. All right. <clears throat> oh, you say you're not shamed. Tanya Davis, you say you're not shamed. I'm so glad you're not shamed. But some people are. They always tell me they wait that I go off to go back and watch. All right, let's talk about 21 Savage. Now, this, <coughs> let it be, <coughs> let it be a sign. <coughs> Unto everybody that is watching me, if you watching me right now, and I know some of y'all in the Caribbean watch me, some of y'all in London, you watch me. I see where you watching from. I can't see who you are, but I know how some of y'all don't like to have your papers right. Get your papers right. Get your papers right because this Trump administration will send your hips back where you came from because it looked like 21 Savage is going to be departed. Now, let me tell you who he is. <clears throat> He's a singer and he is a rapper. He's done a lot of collaboration with a whole lot of key hip hop artists and has some hits, but he actually committed a felon in 2014. He actually came to this country in 2005 from the UK. I think, <clears throat> hold on, either he came here in 2005. Hold on, now. He came here in 2004. Yeah, he came here in 2004, but his visa expired. Thank you, Nancy. This is so helpful. You got that $5 back just then. Came here in 2004, and then his thing expired in 2005. But he stayed here in a darn way. And his career took a... I don't know how, how the way they did not know this boy was here. <clears throat> but anyway, they done got him. Got him right here in the Atlanta. And so it looks like that he's going to be sent away because his visa ain't right. But you know, this is what, what I found out when I began to study this. You ever get those notices that come up on your computer about enrolling in these colleges and sometimes even some free offers? Do you know the immigration and, hold on, what's the damn name? I get the ICE, the ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement are creating sites. Listen to me. All y'all ain't got your mess together. <clears throat> creating sites and clickbaits on the internet to get folk attention, get their information, and find these illegal immigrants. And it's shipping them right off back where they come from. So if you are watching me, go ahead and pack your bags. I hate it. And I know you hate it and you don't want to leave your children. But go ahead, pack your bags, or either find you or somebody to marry. Let me just give you the, let me tell you, I, I have watched this happen even in the church. Go find you somebody to get married. And if you're in a state where you can marry the same sex, marry your best friend. I know folk don't want me to tell you that, but somebody going to put that in the comment. Oh, I can't believe you're supposed to be a Christian. You telling two people the same sex. If it gets you to stay in American soil, keep your, just marry them. I'm just, just, it's just paper anyway. I mean, just marry them. Let them stay in another part of your house. And then you go get you a person of the opposite sex if you're heterosexual and you and you have that, your real marriage. But make sure all your male going to the same. Can I get in trouble for saying this? I'm telling people to do something illegal. I don't think I can get in trouble with this. You know, but I, you know, in order for me to go live on the Facebook and talk about Donald Trump and political stuff, do you know they contacted me? I had to send in my passport, my birth certificate. They wouldn't let me say nothing. I, I'm, the people don't understand how serious this is to be up on this thing like that. I had to send in my stuff because they said I couldn't talk about nothing and I can't tell no people how to vote and all this kind of stuff. I said, why y'all being that serious? I'm just a commodore and tater. To my, you an influencer and you can influence how to da da da. Amazon contacted me and said, okay, well then, if you got, I said, now hold on. I'm, I'm just talking. What is it? I don't know if I can get in trouble by telling y'all that. So I'm going to say it like this. This is what I heard somebody else say. I'm not telling you this. Go ahead and get married. <laughs> find you somebody, find you something enrolled in school, get you an education visa, a work visa, and just stay here. Or pack your bags and prepare to go back from where you came. And I know where you come from. Um, you may not want to go back to, but 
they're crazy right now. So you don't want to be in a situation where you leave the house one day and then you come and you can't come back because they done got you over there at the, at the job. 21 Savage, we are praying for you, sort of. And we hope your life get better than what it is right now. Now, this year, I tell you, when I seen this come across my timeline, it bothered me a little bit because I knew instantly this was suicide. Now, they're still speculating whether or not Christoph St. John committed suicide or not. But if you know anything <clears throat> about him, you do know that he was on the Young and Arrested. You do know that he was on the Cosby Show. That's what I really remember him for, Young and Arrested and the Cosby Show. My mom and them all the darn time, they watched. I don't know how... Only thing they watched was stories. And then we got VCRs. I don't know if y'all remember VCRs, but the big old tape you record stuff off TV, they had tapes upon tapes of stories. So when they was at home, we didn't watch the regular TV. They were watching the VHS from the stories of them tape because they missed it. Talking about it in the beauty shop, talking about it everywhere. Stories, stories, the young and the restless, as the words turn, days of our lives, all the kind of going on. <sighs> Lord, I'm, did that come on still? So there's still stories that come on? There's a harass, General Hospital. General Hospital, and um, I didn't know that. All my children. All, my all of that used to get on all, all, all of my nerves. All of my, every last bit. I know how it come on and everything. What now? Bold and Beautiful. Bold and Beautiful. That wasn't a story, was it? You sure? Man, that was crazy. Okay, but anyway, <clears throat> that's what I know him for. Well, for, for those of you that do not know, his son committed suicide. This happened 2014, I think it was. He killed himself with a plastic bag inside of a psych ward. So him and his wife were suing the hospital. They said, you know that our child was dealing with schizophrenia and dealing with suicidal thoughts, and you left him in there with a plastic bag. He killed himself with a plastic bag. When the death of Christoph St. John first hit the news, early in the middle of the morning, his wife posted, now the hospital has killed two men in my life. But she went back and she deleted it. Why? I don't know. But <clears throat> this is what I piece together and what I think. What I think, this man never recovered from the death of his son, the suicide of his son. Now, mind you, some years ago, they had said that Christopher had threatened to shoot himself and to kill himself because he was dealing with depressive thoughts concerning the death of his son. And I heard that he had dealt with suicidal, suicidal thoughts prior to his son dying anyway. So this illness is actually something. And so let me explain this because a lot of people don't understand this. <clears throat> there are a few sicknesses that are generational, meaning you can it's in the blood. It's in the DNA. And it goes from one parent, and it's just a few of them. And and a, and, a, and the ones that do, I'm just going to throw this number out there because I'm going off memory. I think it's 7 to 10% of all diseases actually are encoded in the blood. You got a few of them like um, the leukemia trait. Uh, you got the some mental illness. But let me explain this. You ever go to the doctor and the doctor be like, do your daddy have heart trouble? Do your mama have back trouble? Do you? <clears throat> Let me tell you why they ask that. Because nine times out of ten, whoever raised you and the environment that you were raised in, you're going to perpetuate those same habits. You're going to probably eat the same thing. You're going to probably think the same way. So this is why they ask that. Not because all those 50 lists of different things they ask you do you have. They, don't, they ain't asking you that because that's all hereditary. No, it ain't. It's just that if you raise in a household, the same household where this one dealt with this and that one dealt with this, you can have the same thing going on. And some of that does play into the whole mental illness thing. So you can have a bend towards certain things, but <clears throat> most of the diseases and sicknesses and illnesses aren't even like that. But if you can change the habit, the environment, the thinking, the way of the way of operating that you have been raised, if you've been raised a certain way and then you can establish a whole different pattern of thought and being and existing, then all of those things will not show up in your life. So it looked like to me that the daddy, the pappy, has some kind of psychological thing going on and that thing just rested in his home, took the child out because nine times out of ten, if the parents got it, whatever the parents got, good or bad, it's going to show up doubly, double, double portion in the children. 
And so this is what happened. And so with the child dying, he flipped right on back to that thing and then just took himself out. I heard it was through drugs, particularly alcohol. That's what I heard. But I'm not exactly sure. It's still unfolding. I'm sure a toxicology report has been filed. I think they take three to seven days to come back. So we're going to hear more about this later on. If you are watching me and you're dealing with any suicidal thoughts, let me tell you this here. You might be shaped funny. You might be short. You might have spots. You could be handicapped. You cannot be the, the sharpest pen and, and, and the pencil in the draw. But still, you is lovely. You is kind. You is, what's the woman say? You is important. And you are loved. They somebody gonna love them spots and that and that odd shape. Look, look at um baby Jakes. Look at Daddy Jakes. Well, he ain't really as bad shape as Baby Jake. Cause at least there's some really Daddy Jakes has got big stomach. But look, it don't even matter. You you can be rich and touch the world and not just and not have everything right. Love your darn self and do not take your life. Don't take don't care. what the world gonna do without you. Oh, there's a video I posted <coughs> of Daddy Jakes on my page with a blue check, my personal page. It's the last thing I posted. Actually, I just shared this show. So it's the second thing I posted. If you if you are dealing with depression, go and watch that. It's about three minutes. That thing will lift you up. You'll be standing on your head with inspirational energy. Woo! I think I saw that thing today. I got up from there and felt like I could do anything but fail. All right, so we're going to be praying for the family of Christoph St. John. And any of you that are watching me that are dealing with depression and you're thinking about taking your life, and more people are killing themselves now than ever before. We have more than ever before, especially in the black culture. Yeah, that pastor killed us. Last show, I just went over to pastor. What, Jim? Jim so Howard, I think it was. I've been there. I've done that. Let me tell you all this. this is, I'm, I'm going to go real personal right quick when it comes to suicide. I had never, ever, ever, never dealt with suicidal thoughts in my entire life. Years of counseling, helping people, you know, in the profession that I was in, I've helped, helped other people walk through it. <clears throat> One of my closest friends, really like a family member, used to be my co-host. He dealt with that. He told you guys about that. And I would cry, you know, and, you know because he was going through what he was going through. And, I, and then it was after that, I began, somebody, somebody would say, well, you picked up the spirit for him? No. There were some things that I had not addressed as a young child, as a young man, that I really just lived past. And I'm going to tell you this, success, money, accomplishment, working, job, you can lay into all of those things and you can establish relationships in your life. And all of those relationships, all of those things, and all those, all that stuff you got going on in your life is all about keeping you out of the sadness and keeping you out of the alienation and keeping you out of that space that is uncomfortable for you, that exists within you. And that's what I was doing. Didn't even know I was doing it. And so after I divorced, my kids went with their mom. You know, it was an amicable. Man, now my divorce was an amicable divorce. I know somebody's in my, no, she left you for a woman. No, she did not. <clears throat> It was an amicable divorce. We were still friends. I was still paying her cell phone payment, still covering her insurance. We were just not living together because she was going by her life. But then she just happened to fall in love with her friend while she said it just happened to be of the same sex. But that happened later on. We we were cool, still cool today. Um, now, at the same time, I changed careers. 20 years I've been pastor, so I had all this staff, hired people, all these circles upon circles of people around me working vision. And so when I began to go this direction in entertainment, the folks were like, nigga, what is you doing? How are you going to be a whole pastor? You know, at the same time you start doing, you start pastoring, you tell us don't pay, don't give tithe no more. Don't give offer no more. You change the name from the Breakthrough Church. You went to the MB, to my Breakthrough Now Online. That was already the first thing. And then you say, okay, you're not doing online cyber church no more. Now you're just going to have a partnership um, type of uh, thing going on, the MBN Network, and you're going to do start the show Larry Live and Empower and Power Up 15. What are you doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> they thought I was crazy, and I get it. Because a little bit, I felt crazy long enough, but I was just doing what I just knew what I was supposed to be doing. So, 
all the folk walk up out my life, all that money gone, I went from balling to not. <laughs> I went from surrounded by folk to not. And I like did the, to lost my mind. And I was still on the 18th floor, a very nice apartment right across the way. <clears throat> and I couldn't even walk out of my room. Now my whole my bedroom, the whole front was nothing but glass. So I would overlook the city, overlook Buckhead. And so, but when I would come out in the front, you know, where the balcony was, you know, with just a drop off. And whenever I would come out there, it felt like something was picking me up from my feet saying, Jump! Jumping in it all. You ain't got no money. Folks think you're crazy. You're by yourself. Go ahead on. Then your your ex-wife, because y'all still um, ain't the paperwork ain't done. She'll get that four hundred fifty thousand dollar policy. Your children be good. Go. On. And so I couldn't even walk out in my in my um in the front room without having that battle. And some days I just didn't. And I bet if those that were working for me at the time can remember. <clears throat> I would actually have them going and get all my stuff and bringing it to me because I, I didn't even want to go out of the front room for a spell. And so I understand suicide now and the temptation that the pain brings. See, it's the pain that brings the temptation to, to end it all. And it's going to take just like that. Y'all think your mind, no, your mind is strong. But let me tell you, that mind, it just take one little poop and that thing's on the other side. Just gone. How I get stuck on this? What is it? Okay, let me go on to the next stop. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to stay right here and get on this. Since we talk about suicide, oh, y'all need to pray for Wendy. Wendy Williams. Okay, let me tell you what happened. Now, those of you that follow me, you know I look up to Wendy Williams and what she does. She created a lane in her industry that nobody else created. She's the Oprah of entertainment news and talk, literally. <clears throat> so, she had a whole bunch going on since she fell out when she dressed up like the Statue of the Liberations. Since she fell out looking like the Statue of the Liberations, she ain't been the same. It's one thing at the next, one thing at the next, one thing at the next. I went there to a show. I watched everything, you know, soaking up that energy and stuff. I'm glad I went when she when I did because I don't know what in the world is going on with her now. They said her husband got a hole down the street that, that she prayed and however. Nick Cannon was on the show this morning and he said he talked to her and she was with her husband and her son Kevin. They're all together. Let me tell you how this stuff works. Sometimes in this business, everybody could be talking about something that's not even true. And because she's not coming out and saying anything concerning it. So the stories are just growing and growing and growing. Now, I suspect that there's probably not, there's probably a whole nother story behind all of this and Wendy is letting it ride because this is going to help her ratings. What she need to do now because now Fox has said that she don't come back, she's going to get replaced with Steve Harvey. Let me tell you how. Because Steve Harvey, you know, anything about Steve Harvey's show, you know, they replacing him with Kelly Clarkson's show. So he's going through some changes with NBC. And she on Fox. So he's actually looking for a new home for his show because NBC done pulled him in some major markets. So he wants to take Wendy's spot, allegedly. If she don't bring her hips back, the Wendy show in this 10th year is going to go bye-bye. And I really don't want to see that to happen because Wendy is the, they have to get two and three and four and five people at a time to, to hold her spot because of what she has created in that space. I really don't want to see that to happen. And I really want to find out what in the whole hell and the heaven is really going on. Wendy, open up your mouth. You're sitting too darn quiet. Why are you not saying that we know what in the world going on? Would you please say something so we can find out? Text me. Just tell me. Tell, that would be wonderful. How about you just text me, call me, inbox me, DM me, and tell me so I can tell everybody what Wendy told me her darn self because I want to know. I'm team Wendy. Now, y'all can say what you want to say, but I, I am and always shall be team Wendy. All right, RHO. Let me tell you what's going on with the Atlanta Housewives. Now, let me tell you how I got hold of this show. Here I am, moving to a new apartment. It's the same thing that happened. I was getting a new TV, and when the TV came on, it was on this show. I, it was their first season, and I saw Nene. I can't remember who was in the house with me, but I said, this girl on this show, that right, she's going to be a star. She's going to be a household name, and it has absolutely happened. Nene is like the 
the main one who created and picked all these folk, pitched to the producers in order to create this show. Well, it has the lowest ratings it has had its entire life of the show. They plug these two other girls in there. It ain't worked. They got rid of Phaedra. Phaedra should have never left. Sheree needs to be in there. You need to keep. Let me tell you what you need to do. Keep Nene. Marlo was a great addition. Cynthia. Portia. There are only two people that has been verified that will actually go into the 12th season. Guess who that is? That's Nene and Portia. Not even Candy. Yep. Only Nene and Portia has been very darn five that they will actually go into the next year. Now, Kenya was actually really good for the show, but let me tell you what she messed up, bring her over. Kenya, she not on this show this year because she messed up with the producers last year. Let me tell y'all, folks, whenever you want to get into reality TV and you want to do anything grand in TV, first of all, reality is a good way to step into whatever you want to do. You can learn... We see that with Cardi B. None of us would know who Cardi B was. Granted, she was killing the vine. She was killing it on social media. And people knew about her underground. But she was still broke. And she didn't have the fame that she need. Until Mona Scott signed her to love and hip hop. When she got signed up, she got that opportunity. And she used it to her advantage. Once you get on reality TV, the first year or two, you're not really making no money. That's why if you go back to the first year of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, all these women was busted, including Kenya. Their first few seasons don't look right today, but to get them some teeth and get better get them some better folk to do their hair and their makeup and build these houses and stuff and be a better. When Nene first got on the show, Nene ain't even had no house. Greg went, borrowed money and from Dwight, the, you know, the, um, the, the man that act like, a, uh, uh, yeah. The Dwight here in Atlanta borrowed money for him, from what I understand, allegedly, and got his house just to, so Nene rented the house. That's why they, they filmed in the show. They want no furniture or nothing because they had no money. <coughs> had to look the part. But now they got plenty of money. So what happened last year, she got pregnant, got her new man, and wanted to keep it all private privacies. You can't do that. When you are in the public eye and you're doing reality show, they want you to share all your life. You don't have no privacy. You're using publications. And because she did that, she put a bad taste in their mouth. And so then they lowballed her and said, this is what you're going to come for this season. What season is it, 11? Season 11 for her. She's like, no, I ain't doing that. I'm Kenya. I brought y'all. They said, okay, all right, you're going about your business. And now she out there posting on Instagram with her baby and stuff, and, and, and that's it. So she recently went to the offices here. It used to be in my, my building. To the offices here, and she negotiated. She got two million in her last show. She settled for five hundred thousand. So nine times out of ten, five hundred thousand dollars for an entire season. Yep, went from two million to five five hundred thousand because she tried to play hardball. Her agent should have punched. Well, I ain't gonna say that. Her agent should have told her hips that was damn. For her to want to hide her life in prophecies when she in publications and then try to fight with Bravo. Damn. She shouldn't have done it. She thought that she could do negotiate like Needy did. Girl, you ain't started a thing. You just can you. We like it, but you just can you. You can't do that like that. So now she said a thousand thousand. So she probably the third person that's gonna be there for the twelfth season. <clears throat> I don't know what the rest of these folk is gonna do. I heard. The bloggers say that Phaedra coming back. I do know that Nene wants her to come back because Phaedra told me. But I iced Phaedra. Bring back them things. I iced Phaedra. I said, Phaedra! You don't want to go back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <coughs> she said, I'm never going to say never. She's never. She said, but I'm a lawyer. I got this business where I'm bearing fault. I'm doing good. There's no need for me to go back to TV. I said, Phaedra, you are, Phaedra, what you see on TV is a is a turned down version of her. Phaedra is extremely funny. Extreme she's funny like um Nene is. Extremely funny. And I asked her, I said, you gonna go back in there? She said, I ain't gonna say never. She said, but I really don't, it's not what I'm looking for. It's not what I'm trying to do. And she giving me the right answer, because that's what she needed to be saying to Bravo so they can up them millions of dollars that they give her for <laughs> for being on the show. So that's what's going on with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Oh, let me tell you what happened in, what, on the same, this same weekend. Did y'all see the picture of Bow Wow and that light-skinned girl? <clears throat> this is the picture. 
Bow Wow and this girl got arrested because they said that they was in an altercation. Both of them got battery charges. But the girl was trying to say that Bow Wow was fighting her. Bow Wow said the girl started fighting me. I want you to look at this picture and I want you to tell me who do you think was fighting who? She beat his... <laughs> beat. She tore that tail up. She tore that tail up from home to your mama. She tore that tail up. She told, she, I mean, <laughs> she looked, <laughs> she scratched right across his face. And I put the eye to him. And that's bad on light skin folks. That's going to go black. That's going to go red and get real plum color. And then it's going to go black scab. That's going to be horrible. Absolutely. Your tail was scratched the darn death. She ain't got no marks on. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I love all the women. But some of y'all. Let me tell you what my mom said. In fact, let me say what my mom said. Y'all get mad. My mama don't get mad at me. She said, now, Larry, don't you never put your hands on no woman. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, but if that woman quits acting like a lady and punches you and put her hands on you at that moment, she not a woman no more. She said, protect yourself. That's what my mama told me. Now, I'm not saying you should ever hit a woman. But once you get, she, she doing you like a bobcat. You just going to stand there and take it like that. And you light skin is going to mess up your whole, your whole, your face is how you make your money. Cause it ain't your rapping and your singing. I mean, it may be, I don't know. I don't know nothing about Bow Wow. I, I don't know what it is. What does he do? What is, I, <clears throat> I just know he popular. I don't know none of his ministry. Okay. But we, I do like him. But I, I didn't. You know. This is what I say: when she start acting up, run a little bit, and she gonna start chasing you. Then drop. You make one big old giant step to the right, turn to the side, stretch out your left leg, and trip her. Don't put your hands on her. Run a little bit. Step to the right. Stick out your left leg. Trip her. When you get back to running, call your sisters and your aunts. Let them be the. Don't you do that. Do not put your hands on that woman. Do not put your hands on that woman. Triple. That's what you do. All right. It's time for us to talk about the statement I've got to make to the victor because of what they said in their church on Sunday and also catch you up on what I heard about Jamal Harrison Bryant and talk to you about Charles Jenkins. Catch you up on that story. Then I'm going to open up the lines. I'm going to open up the lines. I'm going to tell you what that number is when I come back. I want you to join me in the morning at 6 a.m. to help you start your day with prayer. Are you struggling in your prayer life or just want someone to help you articulate your prayer at the beginning of your day? Don't miss Power Up 15 every Tuesday at 6 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time for 15 minutes of prayer with Larry D. Reed. Call 712-775-7085. That's 712-775-7085. Then press 998-476-POUND to get connected. All right, whew, I got my little piece of water. Y'all notice I'm not coughing as much. I just started taking medicine yesterday. Shout out to whoever that was I met in public yesterday to stay right around here. I was in the um, medicine section and I was doing something, something and so much. She's a nice looking woman too. She, she think, I ain't gonna say that part because she might have a husband. But when she, when she came to me and I looked at her and she said, I don't want to bother you, but is your name Larry Live? I started to say, hell no. My name is Larry Reed. But, you know, but since I said, yeah. She said, I'm going to try not to jump. I'm going to try not to scream. I love your show. I'm a big fan. And this happens to me all the time. <clears throat> and I and I love people. So I, went, I just went to talking to her about whatever was on my mind. I mean, we just talk and just talk and just talk. Hold on for a minute. What's this here? Oh, okay. I'm getting information from from some of these um 
some people are scared of what I'm about to say, but it's going to be all right. I'm, my purpose in doing this is to, is to make you laugh and learn a little bit and entertain. And then we open up the lines where you call and say whatever you want to say about any of these topics. Oh, put the number over there and say no. This is the number that you're going to call in just a few minutes. You'll be able to call in and talk about any topic I talked about. While you're talking about it, a picture is going to come up here. People are going to be able to hear your voice. All right? <clears throat> all right, let me go ahead and get started about this right here. First thing I want to talk about, put that picture up from the last show. Now, the last show I had, I think it was the last show I had, I was talking to you guys about the victor. And I played a tape. You got to go back and watch it. I played a tape of the person that he was trying to use to extort and blackmail Andrea. That person, Tony, he allowed me to record our conversation and I played it. Go back and listen to it. Very interesting. And really, it's it's. It's a shame for God. I mean, because this stuff just happened. Now, this, let me say this. I don't expect, and I don't know what you expect, but I don't expect no pastor, no preacher, no prophet, no bishop, no apostle to be perfect. Married or not, if you mess up, you mess up. I'm okay with that. I'm not saying that the Bible says something that it doesn't say. The Bible talks about adultery, fornication. I get it. But I'm saying I know you a human being. I am too. I can easily make a decision in a moment that can just be terrible for me, my ki- embarrassing for my kids, embarrassing even for Kendall, you know, who's connected to me <clears throat> and some of my friends and maybe my mom and my dad and my family members. I can do that. But Tom, some of this here stuff that I be hearing and I be talking about you guys, it's darn embarrassing because I'm like, dude. It's one thing if you single and you just fucking. I'm, I, and, but it's another thing for you being single and you manipulating all of these women thinking they're about to be your wife. And then the other just horrible stuff. I've seen the emails back and forth between you and escorts asking for the mama and the daughter to perform sexual acts. How much you going to pay them? I've seen that with my own eyes. You on this whole nother stuff. I showed y'all the drunk video. This. You, you ain't. You. What is you doing? You in the wrong profession. Let somebody else do that. You ain't so gifted where we got to have you preaching. We just, <laughs> or pastoring. Then get somebody else. What in the world? You just don't hold another thing. What is you are you ever saved? Watch the why is your wound that something is wrong? And then to set up this young mind with cheering, one with brain tumor and stuff, paying him $125. Oh my god. Knowing that he needed the money to put food on the table that evening. For him to put his whole life. Okay. This one about to talk to some of y'all church people. So I cover that story, go back and you watch it. Now, Sunday morning in their church, allegedly, put that down there, <clears throat> allegedly in the church that the victor pastors, mind you, last week, Chris Hill was there preaching, which was a dumb move. I still stand by that. Chris has not texted me. I'm sure he heard I talked about him. That relationship is probably done because people cannot handle you having an opinion about what they have done public. I don't have no problem with that. Life goes on for Larry. And you live are going to need me. And at that moment you need me, I'm going to be there for you. But I'm remind you, the nigament that you done pulled, I'm going to call you back in 40 minutes. I'm going to hit you back in 40 minutes. I'm going to talk to you about it later. Use a nigga. What that um, Jay-Z said? House nigga, church nigga, still nigga, still nigga. When I've when I done that video, when I've done that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> a church nigga is, a, is still a nigga. I, you know, that's, a church nigga is still a regular nigga. Just plain, I don't care if you're a proper sign one. He's still a nigga. Okay, that's Chris Hill. So last Sunday, a girl named Elder Mia, what I found out, preached this Sunday. Now, she's in, in the pulpit is. And she tells the people, 
Y'all need to stop watching Larry Reed Live. Wait a minute. You gonna call out my whole brand? I, not one time through any topic I talked about it from Bishop War Brown, from Smitty. I'm gonna talk about him tonight too. Go ahead and text him so he can watch. Right here in Atlanta. And then you know they got another one in Macon. Smitty. I know I know what we negotiated, but you messed up because I heard what you said in the back room with some preachers. When in our agreement was that we weren't going to talk about each other. Mm -hmm. You done mess it up. So I'm, I'm still going to abide by it, but I'm going to use different names because I said there's certain names I wouldn't use. So I, I know how to skate around that thing. And if you, want to, if you want to try to renegotiate, you better call Phaedra. Because don't call me because I'm done with you. Because clearly, you don't know how to keep no promise. But anyway, <clears throat> get in the poor Batiz and said, do not watch the... And through all of them stories, even... Um, I need to find another name for William Murphy. Willie. Even Willie. I kept telling you guys, I said, if it worked for you, continue to go. If it worked for you. Some of you have a problem with me saying that. If it worked for you, go head on. Ain't nobody stop. I ain't going to never tell you stop going to somebody's church. Stop giving and supporting somebody. Why am I going to do that? When they got kids, they got family, they got a wife. They got a whole net a group of people who, who are dependent on them. I'm not going to tell you that. See if you can find the clip that I said. I ain't said that. I do not say that. But you're going to get up there in that pulpit and tell folk to not watch that too. What did I say? Not watch. <laughs> to not watch my show. Let me see if I can find some words that, let me see, let me think. Let me drink on that. Hmm. Find some nice words. Oh, this, the first words that come to my mind ain't nice. Uh, <clears throat> some nice words. Uh... That won't nice. I'll put it like that. That won't nice. It won't nice to do. And let me let me let me put a pin in it right here. Remind me what I said. I'm coming up by not being nice. Because it's a problem. The, ch the church has a problem with media and entertainment and TV. How in the whole hell and the heaven do you think we're gonna get the message of Jesus Christ into the world? The way that we do that is by way of media. Holly Carter, Lemuel Plummer did us a service, not a disservice. I don't care what Dante said. Dante got up there and killed everybody and all the preachers up there from having that show. But these avenues, we've got to show the marketplace that there is a market and there's viewers and there's money in this niche market. There's certain shows. What would that preacher said? Bam, Takeda and uh, Belinda um, Scott and them. They got that show all TV. You know what? Because they, when the church starts getting into media, you got niggas like Elder Mia get up in the pulpit and tell folk not to watch. This destroys the relationship that the church has with major networks. That show, there are like three shows I can think of that all were doing good, including the preachers. And the ratings went down because all y'all niggas got in your pulpit telling folks, stop watching. And you not even understand. How do you think the world going to be evangelized? That's why when a lot of people are talking about um, 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 Tyler Paris, him in a dress, but he was preaching in that dress. That's, that's, that's what y'all miss. He was saying the stuff he learned out of the church, particularly Paul S. Morton Church. One of our fathers in the faith. Damn it. You should have Larry live with the game talking about them right now. I'm fussing. I'm in a rant. And I, I feel my help. Messing stuff up. We don't want the, you watching Tyler Perry and going to his shows and watching his movies. Because he a man in a dress and the effeminate and da 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 da. And the things that pertain to a woman shouldn't be, <coughs> excuse me, shouldn't be wearing. Well, a nigga was preaching in that dress better than some of y'all was in the poor pits. Messing stuff up. Frucking up the whole game for all of us. Elder Media had her hips up there. And her hips probably wide because I ain't even see it, but I just feel like they wide. 
It was that's up there talking about don't watch Larry live. What if I say y'all niggas stop going to these whole churches? I ain't never did debt. I ain't never tell nobody stop um, listening to James Fortune music called he bust his wife upside the head. I ain't say, allegedly. I ain't say that. Even when I talked about Tasha <coughs> Paige Lockhart that time or Lee Andrew been on the show. I ain't told nobody stop listening to nobody music. Y'all niggas. Ah! <laughs> y'all need to quit y'all mess. The next person that tells somebody to not watch my show, I hope your throat grow hair and you start itching. I pray that you uh, get constipated. I pray. I pray if you don't get constipated, you get the runs and diarrhea and they leak down into your shoe. May the back of your eyeball itch and your hair fall out. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm playing. But you know, that's how them old saints used to do. <coughs> and the, <coughs> the old pastors, they tell us we ain't obey God, you're going to die. I understand what they meant. They weren't talking about physically. But we thought it was physically. But they were talking about a spiritual death. But I thought we were, I was going to die for real. That's what I thought. Bring it back over. So, this is what I say concerning this whole situation, what y'all said in the pulpit concerning Larry Live. I say, God bless somebody else besides you. All right. Let's go to <laughs> Let's go to the next topic. Oh, bring Jamal over here. I got to say something about Jamal because <clears throat> the last time he was on my show, now he's been on my show for good things, but the last time he was on my show, I talked about him called that, that $300 that he gave you for. I just can't do. Let me tell you something. You trying to bless me, do not give me $300, please. Well, let's explain what I mean. My whole check going, you give me three hundred dollars. It just don't seem right. I mean, just just ain't enough money. That ain't no check. That's a day's wages. Mm -mm. And give me at least fifteen hundred dollars for a week, <clears throat> a week of work. But if any of y'all watching Larry live right now, and you want to give the NBN Network three hundred dollars, that's all right. <laughs> Cause I still got other jobs. But when somebody done lost their whole income. To me, this was crazy. But we ain't talking about that. Y'all, <coughs> I talked about him for doing that on the show. Because that other man down there in Florida, or the faith center, he gave him for $3,497.53 a piece. Now, that's a blessing. Um, Let me tell you what he done did. There was a college called Bennett College, the first all-black female college. And it was about to get lose their accreditation, which might as well be shut down. A lot of these accreditations are all about having money and knowing the right people, somebody to vouch for you on the boards and da 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 So they were about to be shut all the way down. And you know Jamal Harrison Bryant love black women. So what he did, you can take that any way you want to take it. What he did, he began to use his influence to basically call around to these churches and get the church involved in keeping this black all women's college open. They needed to raise $5.2 million dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, because of Jamal Harrison Bryant, not only him, but a great deal. We're talking several tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars were raised as a result of him. Since he got involved, I think it was like a million short. <clears throat> he got involved and whole churches began to write $50,000, $100,000, $25,000. Dollars. Jamal Harrison Bryant has pulled that all women's college out of the red. This is praiseworthy. In spite of many people saying that he did it because it's all publicity. Yeah, we know they hired him for this at um, uh, Newburgh because he's a political leader. He has um, pool and entertainment. They, he's fulfilling Eddie Long's shoes. Eddie Long was doing all this kind of stuff all over the world and all over the city. And so they got the right person for the job. And Jamal Harrison Bryant is holding up his end of the bargain. But I'm concerned because in times past, this man's peen has been out of control. And so I, I'm going to start praying for him. I ain't going to pray too hard because sometimes you can pray real hard for somebody and you get thrown in the gap. And I know in that position that he probably getting 
push just thrown at him from all separate kinds of ways. And that's a whole lot of temptation. So I'm just going to do one of them elementary prayers. Like, God bless him. Bless him, Lord. Keep him. That's going to be the extent of my prayer. I'm going to get thrown in the gap between everything that he got coming at him. <clears throat> but he's doing a good job over there at the new birth durations already. Thought it was going to end up turning to a new brothel. It's turning out to be new birth. And that is a great thing. And we are excited about it. They said the whole bottom floor and some of the top is full. I looked at T.D. Jake's service on um Sunday. He had a whole lot of folks. I said, did it have something special? Because these churches have been getting scarce. And I hadn't seen nobody up there to the top of Jake's church in a long time, but it was up there to the top this past Sunday. And this past Sunday service online was good. Cause I was searching for everywhere. I said, I got to feel something. He had that thing in his service this Sunday, that thing. Woo! I throw my hands up and I said, thank you! All right. Oh, so Sunday evening, I'm scrolling through the internet and I started getting these inboxes concerning this man. This is Charles Jenkins. Now let me tell you who this is. I'm going to help some of y'all, because some of y'all may not know who this is, but this is Charles Jenkins. He, he well, in the write-up, they said <clears throat> that he's retiring from the fellowship. That was the name of the church that he took over. That's Clay Evans Church. He took over the church 15, 20 years ago. I can't remember. I'm going off all recall. Y'all put it down in the comments if y'all know. He took over the church, but Clay Evans was sort of old school. Had a great foundation and, and and roots there in Chicago, so a lot of old money was was there in the church. But when he took over, and he his he's a songwriter. What else is it? He may do good. He he's a leader, but for me preaching, he's not really a preacher. So he started sort of getting a lot of new faces. <clears throat> the millennials. Now, one thing about the millennials. Millennials is not going to give you their money unless it is really something that they like. And so the argument allegedly, put it down there. <coughs> the argument allegedly within the fellowship is this. That though Charles Jenkins has really put the church on the map, grown the membership, and, and given it worldwide wide recognition, Still, there's a money issue and not, not enough, the, all these people not bringing in a whole lot of money and a lot of the old money has walked out of the church. This is allegedly. So Clay Evans is getting old. A lot of the people that make the decision in the church didn't want him as the pastor no darn way because it's just this young folk stuff and then he up there in the pulpit, this means war clapping fun and folk got on fatigues and they, they Baptist. Y'all doing all this kind of new age little kind of going on. This folk, we get this little boy up out of here. Get him out of here. But Clay Evans, no, oh, this is my son and whom I'm well pleased. Well, <clears throat> I guess Jenkins realized that Clay getting old and they're going to be putting him out of there. So he has set it in place to where December will be his last time in the church. And he's actually going to one of Craig Oliver's church. Craig Oliver is here in Atlanta and got like four or five churches, a total of 16, 17, 18,000 members. So he's going to take over a church in Atlanta. Some of you may say, why? He's going to go from Chicago to Atlanta. So you don't know everything. Did, he has been at Houston's Cheesecake Factory, Grand Lux. This boy be around Buckhead. All, he live him, him and his wife. He always with his wife. He been living here in Atlanta for a long time. Y'all just ain't know it. He been here. He been here. So this, although they're saying retiring, and somebody said, how can he retire and he's old? Well, he done did it. So he must be at 20 years. He must have been there at the fellowship for 20 years. I think he took over. He was in his, in his 20s. <clears throat> so he must have been there for 20 years. Got 20 years, you can retire. Essentially, that's what a lot of times I say I did because I passed for 20 years and not no, anymore. But I'm pretty sure he retired with some severances and some other stuff. And now there's this other guy. I forgot to pull this picture. Um, another guy that's taken over his church where the guy that's taken over his church, Reginald, is actually the spiritual son of Smitty. And was in Smitty's church here in Atlanta and then took over Smitty's church in Macon. Mm -hmm, sure did. But then he left because y'all remember when I did the story, I kept referring to Reginald. I said that Reginald was the cleanup man. And he was one of the ones that was sicker. 
sick. I can't say the name because I'm gonna keep my end of the agreement, but I'm, I'm gonna walk this fence right through here because y'all y'all fooled up with me. Smitty, A.K. Mountain Dew, because that's another one of his names. So y'all, some of y'all gonna know exactly who I'm talking about. Smitty, A.K. Mountain Dew, frucking around with all of the different women's. <laughs> Rather than got tired of all that kind of going on, although he honored the spiritual father. Honor him, honor him, honor him, honor him. But got sick of being in the middle, the, a part of the cleanup crew. There was a whole crew there cleaning up stuff there. But you know, all them boys is friends and Jenkins. Let me tell you, you know Jenkins got his own stuff too. Just Google Charles Jenkins naked and this going to pop up. It is right here. See that? Now, it ain't going to look like that. You're going to be able to see what's right there in the middle. Bring me back so I can show them what a street blade. Bring me back so I can show them. It's hanging down there like that right there. It's, t it's just like that. I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. <clears throat> and I watched plenty of porn years ago. And I ain't, everything I saw was straight. That thing was like that. I said, well, sir. But if you Google Charles Jenkins naked or Charles Jenkins penis, Charles Jenkins peen, and this can come up, you see it, it's right out there. It's on one of them blog sites. I Google just like you did, and that came up. I only pulled that one because that's the one I can show. I can't show the other ones like that. So did he retire or is he resigning? Is there something, Some the lady that stopped me in the store yesterday, we talked about this because she used to go to the fellowship. She said, I wonder has it came out and I looked at her like, you, what you about to say next? Because I'm sure I am a recorder. And this is about to be recorded in my spirit. <laughs> this, is going in, this is going in my spiritualizations. And I'm going to bring this up <coughs> later on. Because to me, there very well could be something behind this that's going to come out later on. It certainly cannot top. This here, show it again. Whatever come out certainly can't top that. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Let me look. Where is his hand at? What is he doing? Why his other hand is there? I can't stand folk that brush their teeth away from the from the sink and get the uh uh all that uh, foam on the floor and then the carpet you got cleaning up later on. All right. <clears throat> he not need to. I wonder why he been on like that. It might be. Anyway, I got something hung right in the back of my my, my nose cavity hanging right in my throat. I gotta cough that out. It's making me <clears throat> like that a whole lot. But anyway, but y'all Google that. That's still out there. That's not a story I'm breaking. That is out. You know, so I'm just talking about it. We all talk about it behind the scene in the darn way. Whatever his name mentioned, I always think that. But y'all know it's a my God is awesome. He can uh, uh, straighten out my pain. Hide me from the rain. This song he done. And another song that he done is, because uh, it need to be straightened out. That, that crook. There's a doctor somewhere. Miami can fix it. Straighten it out, Jesus. Straighten out the dang. Straighten it out, Judas. Um, <clears throat> that's Valley Boy. Get me out, did you know that? You ain't been to church in so long. Yeah, I know the song. Um, what other song he done? Oh, I time on time on time on time. This means war. This means. Mm. Y'all go look it up and watch him clap. Something is wrong, girl. Uh, uh, wrong with this? What is that? There's something wrong with that. But you know what? <clears throat> oh, then the other song came out. Winning. It wasn't as big as um the other two songs. This means war and awesome God is the main two. Yeah, I heard about it, but it, it ain't popular. Them two songs are the main songs, they're like really big songs. Yeah. So, Craig Oliver, you going to Craig Oliver Church. Craig Oliver, Craig Oliver. 
All right, I'm through with my topics. I'm opening up the line. Here we go. <clears throat> the number is, this is the number to call, 646-787-8174. If you have a business, I'm going to run this commercial, give you time to um, load up the line. 646-787-8174. 646-787-8174. Call in if you have anything to say about anything that I'm talking about, any topic. For those of you that have been this owners, you know it's tax time. Call this girl here and get your mess together. JKA Associates LLC has 20 years of experience working with individuals, business owners, entrepreneurs, and small businesses. They specialize in IRS tax resolutions. If you've received a notice from the IRS regarding your taxes, please call. They can help. 404-736-9177. They provide assistance with filing prior tax returns. IRS penalty abatement can help business owners save on their Schedule C self-employment taxes. They can answer all of your questions. Visit the website at jkaassociates.org that's jkaassociates.org or call 404-736-9177 that's 404-736-9177 Jada K. Abernathy CEO JKA Associates LLC Accounting and Business Advisory Making the Financial Difference Call now 404-736-9177 <clears throat> All right, we're about to go. So I'll, I'm giving you one minute to tell me what you think, whatever your topic is, and you're going to be able to talk about it. You are the co-host for Larry Live, so I want to hear what you think. And the, everybody's listening to you. Let's go. <clears throat> Caller in at 8933. What's your name and where you're calling from? <clears throat> Larry. Hey there. Am I on the air? You on the air. What's your name where you're calling from? My name is Nicole, and I am calling from Bowie, Maryland. What up? So the whole baby Jake's thing, <laughs> I've been going back and forth. His wife needs to sit down. Can the preachers stop making their wives the co-pastors in the pulpit? Hmm. Get some, go go to class. Hmm. Learn how to preach. Just because you giving them some don't mean you should be a co-pastor. Hmm. Okay. And what you I'm have just a problem? And you, she need to get out that pulpit talking about that woman is the devil. He had to open up the devil's door. I know that's the truth. That's that's exactly that's the whole problem that I have <clears throat> with this whole quote unquote confession because it wasn't truthful. Because this girl was not chasing after him. Now maybe one of them other girls was, but this particular girl that I interviewed and I played the audio for you guys, she was not chasing him yes. at all. He turned the relationship sexual um, and began to give her money, basically paying paying her, giving seed to her, in turn, videos, FaceTimes, text messages, and pictures of her vagina and of her breast. He turned the relationship into that, so it was it was more predatory than it was her pursuing him. But the pool, and you're correct. But the pulpit is not the place for that type of issue to be brought up and pe put people down. Let's say they're past it; they should not be using the pulpit to try to make his wrong right, and then the congregation clapping to that foolishness. When is somebody going to stand up and say, "Pause"? This is not what the purpose of the pulpit. We are the only ones that stand that. We and a few other bloggers and people online and, and really um, secular social media, we're the only ones that are asking questions. Um, and I don't think there's nothing wrong with asking questions and, and wanting an explanation. Yeah. Well, but, you know, keep your show up. I'm upset that you are no longer on YouTube live. live. Yeah, it, but you're talking about things that the, a lot of people who are really into the church are leave. You're bringing up issues that are major issues, yeah. and I stand by. There's several mega churches in Maryland where the wives become the co-pastor and they don't know what they're doing, and then the pastor expects the congregation to bow down to the wife. Mm. It's not supposed to be that way. I, We're not I, supposed I to cater <clears throat> to your spouse. I agree. I think this is a new thing, a new fad, and I think it's also a way of people 
of men securing their empires by putting their wives on the board or making them the co-pastor to give them more of a presence in the business or the administrative side of the church. I think it's I think it's the tactic that is more a military tactic when it comes to um, running a business or a corporate tactic to running a business. And a lot of these women are not equipped to be the second spiritual leader in charge. I adern agree. <clears throat> well, I'm going to let the next caller call in, but okay. I will be watching you next week. Thank you so much. And tell everybody about the show. Oh, I done shared, shared, shared. Ah. I'm even shared with the community college kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is what life is like. Don't go in the church and get caught up with ah, the pastor passing the community whoa. pain. Because you're young, they're going to come for you. I'm passing. Oh, okay, thanks for calling in. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <clears throat> and, and this is the reason why I need for you guys to share. And I need for you pastors and everybody to quit telling folks not to watch. I'm in negotiations right now, a few negotiations. And one of the things we promise we have, but some networks won't touch certain things because... If all of these churches come together, they're strengthening numbers and, and boycott certain things, then it's not going to last on network TV. And some of us belong on TV. All right, let's go. <clears throat> Call it in in 1637. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hello? Hey, you got to listen through the phone. How you doing? What's your name? Where you calling okay, from? Okay, let me turn it down. Okay. Oh, let me lay on it. Oh, I have a different question tonight. Okay. I want to change the conversation a minute. No problem. What is the difference with the governor in Virginia painting his face black and the black church doing the praise team doing their face white? Hmm. What is the difference? And I'm going to hang up and listen. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I... Well, blackface has always been um, far back as I can remember. And somebody may be more well versed in this than me. Blackface has always been something that has been looked down upon as derogatory, especially in the recent years, as derogatory towards black people. It's a sensitive thing, almost like what the flag, the the rebel flag is the rebel flag, is that a proper the Confederate flag. <clears throat> what it stands for for some black people. It's just one of those things that are just seen as um, improper. White face is actually something that's more theatrical and it is used for with mimes. It's used in some um, plays. It's in Phantom of the Opera. It's like a way of putting on a, a mask. And so it's totally different. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. All right, let's call her. Call it in and in fourteen eighty eight. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, what's going on, Mary? How you doing? What's up? What's up, man? Hey, look, check this out. You should. I think you should um take Nick Cannon's spot on Wendy Williams show, Doc. Ha ha ha! Wouldn't that be great? That would be a great thing. Man, go there and represent the church, man. Uh, yeah, I know they had me talking about some everything, which I wouldn't mind. But of course, me being there, I'm always ready. Whatever you do, I'm talking about Jamal Bryant and his community pain. <laughs> his pain is out of control. His pain is out of control. Thanks so much. Thanks. God bless you, Doc. All right, you Please too. Get on the show, man. Have a yeah. Thank you. Somebody's in here talking about, Larry, you still got that frog in your throat. You've been coughing since the College of Prophets. Oh, no. It, no. <clears throat> it's just the prophetic college. There's the College of Prophets something totally different. The prophetic college, they have a meeting in New York. In fact, I put a fly over here. The prophetic college um, did have, and it's basically Bishop Jordan and Bloomer. They're getting all prophets and prophetics together for a consortium March the 21st. And you guys can go there to the site, mypropheticcollege.com, and you can sign up if you want to be a part so they can send you all the inf infodermation. But yeah, I went there and a baby made me sick. And at the same time, I have allergies and it was a change of climate. And so if I got over the cold and stopped coughing, then my allergies started kicking in. And now that drip them started in the back of my throat a darn again. You know, but it's everything is, um, I mean, it's just clear whenever it come up. It's not no kind of infection or anything. It's just, 
gonna have to go back to my primary care doctor and get back on the nose spray. I had stopped doing it since I moved here to Atlanta, but I guess I gotta get back on it and start taking care of my allergies again. So <clears throat> that's what's going on. And I just took medicine today for the cough. I hate, hate taking medicine. All right, next caller. Call it in and then 2869. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This song, you're from Connecticut. What's up, Reed? What up? Listen, ever since now, this is just my opinion. Na, 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 na. <laughs> um, now, as it relates to Charles Jenkins. Okay. God bless his soul. <laughs> but I believe he sold his soul. God bless his soul. Uh -huh. I believe he sold his soul. Mm -hmm. He wears too much black now. See, when they sell their soul, they start wearing black and stuff. <laughs> you say, when you say I he believe, sold his I soul, believe, explain what you mean. I believe, okay, so, you know, with this, all this here, Illuminati and all that stuff, I do believe that that's real. Oh. And ever since he made it big with you, My God is Awesome, he just went from preaching to commercial to entertainment to all of that. And I believe at some point he got caught up in that. And I just believe the love of Jesus that he had once before. I just believe, and I could be wrong, God forgive me, but I believe he sold his soul some type of way or what have you. That's just my opinion, so forth and so on. Oh, God wow. bless his soul, but I believe he sold his soul. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for calling. All right. You're the co-host, so whatever you say, it we don't have to share the same opinion. You are the co-host, and whatever your point of view is, you can share it. And go to the next caller. We got about five more to take. Call it in at 9880. What's your name? Where you're calling from? Hey, my name is uh, L in Chicago. All right. Uh, I'm calling from Chicago. Uh, I just have, I, I want to, I'm listening to the show and um, church people. Uh, I'm, I'm, I used to go to church all the time, but I had to stop going because I've seen something that happened in the church and it happened to me. And it was, it was real terrible. Um, my house burned down, and I had um, a friend from the church recommend a contractor. The contractor took the money, and I talked to the pastor. The pastor said that it was okay for the contractor to take the money. It was justifiable, which it was not. So now my family is out in the cold, and I spoke to two pastors. One was from one church, and the other one was from another church. And uh, they wound up taking the money. And when I spoke to the pastor and he said that it was justifiable, I was like, well, wait a minute. God charged charge you to do the right thing as far as your congregation. I'm in your congregation. And I didn't do anything wrong but try to hire me a contractor to take care of my house. So do you think I'm wrong for not wanting to go back to church at that point? <clears throat> I totally understand it. I'm not going to say that you're wrong because if you are jaded to the point to where <clears throat> you can't really listen to the word or come into the church and have an authentic experience because of, you know, speculations and suspicion because you have gotten to see how some churches handle their parishioners, I would say you probably do need to take a time to heal and really, you know, deal with that pain and deal with all of the repercussions of that. I would also say that after you do that, then just go find another church. And, and before you connect in a way to where you can be harmed again, inspect it. There's nothing wrong with going to a church for a period of time and just checking things out. And I think the way you really can check things out is just not the Sunday morning experience. Check and see how that midweek, you know, when it ain't that kind of service going on, because Sunday morning every church roll out the red carpet because they want you to become a part. <clears throat> but go on that Wednesday and, you know, do some Googleations. Find out some stuff about the pastor beyond the church, their educational level, their experience level, you know, how long have they been married, have been able to manage or keep relationships in their in their life, you know, and how the relationship with their kids, they got any illegitimate children or some hoes out there in the street. You can easily find out, easily find out, watch my show and see if they have came up ever. But, but that's not. But but this is it. I knew this particular pastor all my life, and this person mm -hmm. and their family was never like this. Mm -hmm. But then the the friend that was recommended to me was from another church, mm -hmm. and these are well known pastors. Mm -hmm. So when I, I just felt that I was robbed in the church, 
Mm. And um, it, it's just horrible the way that they did things and the way that I spoke with the pastors. And these are supposed to be so-called men of God. It was horrible. Well, you know, a lot of pastors, they just, I mean, <clears throat> not saying they're not gifted, they're not anointed, but a lot of pastors just don't have that gift of business. And they don't know how to handle things outside of preaching in the pulpit. And I just, I hate that happened to you. And I'm not going to say you wrong for not going. However, I would say that um, you just take some time and heal and, you know, and, and realize it's just that situation and that's that experience, but there can be another experience, you know, so I hope you're able to. Um, well, I, I do appreciate your show. I just started looking at it actually today and um, I'm going to continue to watching and then I'm going to spread the word uh, oh, yeah. with a lot of different people because I, th I think you got a lot to offer and I think you should keep moving in it. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. You have a great day. All right, you too. <clears throat> Thank you. God, that's terrible. All right, next next caller. <clears throat> caller in at 1815. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, yes, uh, my name is Brian. Calling from Chicago. Yeah. Uh, I I kind of clicked off, so I wanted to make a comment about the Charles Jenkins thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I don't know what y'all talked about. I know y'all talked about him retiring. I think that is hilarious for him to retire. You know, okay, 19 years in, he want to move into something else. But see, the thing is that a lot of people don't know about him. He's been trying to get to become the TD Jakes, Eddie Long of Chicago for the longest time. Hmm. When he first came to Chicago, he was a great, dynamic youth preacher. And when he got over fellowship, that legacy, that money went to his head. Hmm. And all he wants to do, he used to be one of Eddie. He used to be under Eddie Long. A lot of people don't know that. He I know that. stuff with Eddie Long back in the day. Yeah. And then he distanced himself after the whole scandal. But he used to, he always wanted a big ministry. He tried to, he brought up a building up on 87, a property, a, a former hair care pro, uh, manufacturing plant. And he wanted to turn that into the new fellowship church. Now, excuse me. Moving fellowship off 45th and Princeton is like moving Mason Temple away from Mason Temple. Mm. You just don't, and you cannot do it. Hmm. It's a historic place yeah. in Chicago. So he tried to do that. Then next thing you know, he wanted to have a hotel and a, a complex and all this stuff. And he wanted to do all If you notice when he got caught up in the cheating scandal, he was coming up with this marketing thing. The lady was helping him with some marketing thing, and he ended up sleeping with her. He was always trying to build a brand. Mm -hmm. And he never got it off in ministry. He got it off in music, off the legacy of that church, because that church had already is is known as a recording church already yeah. from Clay Evans and his through the eighties and nineties. So when he when he, if you notice, he starts slapping his name on top of their album. This nigga don't even can't even sing. I mean, he get up there and do his Stevie Wonder shake. <laughs> You know, like, you know, he get up there and do that Steve Wonder shake. And then, you know, I, people kill me with what they, you know, they put these songs. That song, This Means War, is the worst lyric. Like, lyrically, it's the worst song ever fucking, I'm, I'm sorry, ever written. <laughs> ever. Okay. It's the worst song ever. But he has managed to grow and blow up as an artist. To the point where, if you notice, it was it was the church, it was uh, Fellowship Church on on the album. Then it was Charles Jenkins and Fellowship. Then it was just Charles Jenkins on the CD. Yeah. He, if you notice, <clears throat> even this month with him announcing his retirement, they released a bit. They released an album this like a, I think they released a video this month. Mm -hmm. They released a video this month. He's trying to branch off and become an artist because he just couldn't do it in ministry. Hmm. He could never become, not branch off and become an artist, but because he's already, he's already done that. But that's where he's gotten his major success. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do it in ministry. 
industry. He mm-hmm. couldn't become that, but people have accepted him as an artist, and he's gotten to go, you know, all over the world as an artist. So that's why he's not doing the pastor thing. He's trying to get away from the past. But I think it's stupid. It's not good. You know, mm. it's not good. And I do, I can understand what the lady say, sold his soul and stuff like that. He's always wanted to be famous and popular on the level of a T.D. Jakes mm. and the Eddie Long and things like that. So this is, this, this is probably setting up for something else, mm. you know, that we've yet to, you know, <laughs> find out yet. So, mm. you know. We'll, you, you, you'll be getting it soon. Uh, the news soon. Yeah. We'll be talking about it. Yeah, and yeah, we'll be talking about it on the LRA page or either on this show, one or the other, definitely. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks so much for calling All me. All right. Okay. All right. Caller in and then 3074. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 3074. <clears throat> All right, next caller. Caller in and in thirty six sixty eight. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Larry, how you doing, bro? Hey there. Hey, this Trey over here in Atlanta by Bishop Paul Morton Church. Oh, Jesus generation. I remember you. Yeah. Hey. Uh, thank God for you, brother. Cool. Yeah. Hey, I I just. I'm just not realizing how deep it alone was. Like thousands of people has come from under his leadership. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, man, why do people get what they need and then go somewhere else Hmm. and then like profit off of what they got for free? It don't make sense. Well, one of the things that happened with Eddie Long, and I had this conversation with uh, someone, I can't remember who it was. When Eddie Long went through what he went through prior to that, They were actually, let me see how can I say this without implicating somebody. That whole ordeal, Eddie Long took the fall for some preachers. Eddie Long was not the only person that was in this whole situation with these four guys. Eddie Long was, he, their church has the most land than any black church in America. The ministry was really powerful and everybody was in the bed with Eddie Long. But when that stuff happened with them guys, they ran away from him and they left him by himself. Somebody that I know that was there um, after everything happened, one of the things that took, from the outside looking in, you would think that Eddie Long, because of what happened with these boys, you know, his body, his immune system went down, cancer formed, however. But actually, it was the hurt and the pain from being alienated and abandoned by the church when he had helped so many people. Everybody that's been on this show, especially in the last few months, <clears throat> everybody talking about Reed should be talking about. Now, first of all, it's public, so I am. Number two is you reap what you darn sow. Because a lot of these people behind the scene were shutting doors on Eddie Long. I've, I've recently found all this out. Uh, shutting doors on Eddie Long, talking about him, and left him and hung him out to dry. And those were ones that was up under his covering, those who he paid car notes for, paid for weddings, and things of that nature. And now they're all getting theirs. And a lot of them was worse than what Eddie Long, Long was. From what we understand, and this, I mean, this is just going off of what, just like to me, Eddie Long is like the little peen every now and then. And he happened to, <laughs> and he just happened to make a choice of dealing with younger men. <coughs> they were of age, but they were younger men, and you just can't fool up with no young man that ain't, and you the first piece of peen that they ever had, and then they, they don't know whether they like it or hate it or love it and, and can't stand it. And then when they find out they ain't the only one, then it becomes what it happened. But that's what I found out in the last months of doing this job. When I first talked about Ed and on, I only had the information I had then. But um, yeah, he had a great ministry and he did do a lot of good and a lot and helped a whole lot of people. But we ain't never hear about none of that while he was alive. <clears throat> Thanks uh, so much. Hey, mm-hmm. last question okay. before you go, because you took up. But uh, <laughs> hey, why is it, why is it that uh, Bishop Morton responded to the? Um, 
uh, why is he the one that had to sit the guy down instead of a uh, bishop? And uh, wh- where's that bishop from? Oh, Joseph Walker. Um, See, Joseph man. Walker took over. Yo. Yeah, Joseph Alf yeah, Walker took out. over the Full Gospel Fellowship when Bishop Paul S. Morton resigned or retired. Um, yeah, I know. The, but the I'm saying, victim. Why did Paul Morton send the letter rather than him sending the letter? Because the victor, number one, was his spiritual son, not just somebody that was under the Full Gospel. He was the one that appointed him as a bishop. He was the one that had him over that auxiliary in that fellowship. So it was he. He was the one that put him in that spot before Walker took over. So he was the one to speak up. Yeah. All right. I really appreciate you, brother. All right. No problem. <clears throat> All right. Next caller. All right. No more callers. How about that? Thank you so much for watching. Share right now. If you're watching, share, 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 share before I go off. And I'll see you here on next Monday. But make sure you turn your notifications on because you never know when I come through with an interview or some hot breaking news, something done happened, and you call in and tell me what you think, and I tell you what I think about whatever's happening in our world. So make sure you follow me and tell everybody about Larry Live. I see you later where we can get together, laugh, and learn. Have the Commodore station absolutely. Peace. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.